Samford plus spring equals beautiful. The campus is blooming as we enter April. And as always, it's Vale Forest telling us that old man winter has packed up and shipped out. Up next, of course, the dog days of summer, but here we call that Rascal Day. All kind of canines on campus celebrating Rascal, who left our Cumberland School of Law with a doctor of canine jurisprudence. Rascal, a former first lady, our students lending a helping hand, and graduates taking a peek towards May. I'm Brad Radisi, and this is the Samford Chronicle. All right, we're going to start with the Tom and Marla Court's Distinguished Author Series. This year's guest was none other than former First Lady Laura Bush. And this series is courtesy of the Orlean Bullard Beeson School of Education. Mrs. Bush, of course, is a former teacher and librarian and helped our School of Education celebrate 100 years of preparing teachers. And Mrs. Bush won over the huge crowd right away. And yes, I know, this is Sam not stand. She even recounted Dr. Court's time in the Bush administration after leaving Samford in 2006 and their shared fondness for education. Another special guest on campus came via the Woodrow Wilson Guest Fellow. And this year we welcome Barbara Gottschalk, the co-founder of Seeds of Peace. It was standing room only in the Howard Room, people waiting to hear about the organization that helps build relationships among young people around the world. Peace is possible. That if you work on it and you start with young people, it's much more likely that you'll achieve peace. Beeson Divinity School held its Biblical Studies lectures and they didn't have to go too far for a featured guest. Dr. Alan Ross, a professor of Old Testament and Hebrew at the school, gave a series of lectures titled, From Prayer to Praise by the Resurrection. And as Dr. Ross wrapped up, Beeson Divinity School honored its 2015 Master of Divinity Distinguished Alumnus of the Year. The honor going to this man right here, Justin Wayne Scott. Congrats to him. Meanwhile, Samford Center for Science and Religion welcomed historian Peter Harrison to talk about the religious origins of science. He notes that while many think science and religion can't coexist, many scientists are indeed Christian and it's their faith that motivated their scientific passions. And you know, it's always great when we see Samford students working in the community, especially when it's with kids. And that's exactly what we saw from our Communication Sciences and Disorders Department. They spent a good part of the day at the Bell Center, a place that helps young people with disorders. Our students were there promoting literacy through reading bags. Not only were they helping, but gaining hands-on experience. For an undergraduate student, they don't always have the opportunity to have some hands-on time. That's typically reserved for more graduate students as they are the ones who truly need the clinical hours. So for our undergraduates, what, what an exceptional, experiential moment this is for them to be able to be here and experience this like hands-on. I really just want to serve people and improve lives and I think that that's what we're called to do as believers in, in Christ. I think that that's really important and so I'm glad to be able to incorporate that calling into, into my life every day. That's really exciting for me. Fourth graders have big dreams, and students from the Orlean Bullard Beeson School of Education get to help these fourth graders dream big. It's Space Day. 80 or so students were on campus, hosted by teacher education students. It's days like this that help them work in real classroom settings and have some fun along the way. Now, throughout the year, the Cumberland School of Law hosts forums featuring amazing guests and experts. This forum addressed bullying in the internet. The discussion was led by individuals with experience through this topic, speakers from across the country. Now moving across the country is Caravan 43, a vigil moving through the United States bringing attention to 43 missing students in Mexico. The caravan plans on stopping in 43 cities in the United States, one being Birmingham, right here at Sanford. 
We brought them to Sanford because Sanford is interested in social, social justice issues and it's important that we give them a venue here. And I'm so happy to have them here in Birmingham. I thought it was a great opportunity to have our students engage with the kind of more international work. So it's mid-April, so that means we're about a month away to commencement. I know it's a fun time, but it's also a pretty nerve-wracking time as graduates, well, they're coming down to the wire. But to help ease the workload is Bulldog Blastoff. A few weeks ago, soon-to-be graduates, they're able to handle commencement business like those graduation pictures, signing up for the Alumni Association, and getting measured for their caps and their gowns. This experience at Stanford has gone so fast. Um, it's been an amazing ride, and I'm really excited to graduate. I'm scared, but, um, you know, it's, it's been so quick, and I just can't believe how quickly it's just flown by. Sanford has helped me grow and develop not only as a student but as a person and in my walk with God also and uh, had I not come here I definitely would not um, be the person that I am today so I'm very thankful for that. So the class of 2015 is on notice we're close to sending another set of graduates into the world to make it a better place. I'm Brad Radisi and you've been watching the Sanford Chronicle. I'm going to leave you with some sights and sounds from our ROTC Detachment's Retreat Ceremony. I'll see you next time.